What's up, guys? Welcome to Box of Box Football. I'm Drew, and we're just here going to react to Real Madrid versus um, PSG and uh, Jack. I'm not even a PSG fan, Jack. But <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> it felt like I was watching Arsenal, but a really, <laughs> really, 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 really bad version of Arsenal. That's how right. bad it felt. Now, listen, you guys know that's the one score. Hell of a, that's one hell of a criticism, James. Jack, you listen. You guys know the score. If you're a Real Madrid fan, you are ecstatic. All my days, what a comeback. Karrion Benzema with a hat-trick. We'll get to him. But this, to me, is mainly about PSG. Jack, to me, it's this very, very simple. We look at teams, we talk about bottling teams, you know, teams who have bottled stuff. I remember Arsenal, to me, bottled a lot of stuff. Spurs, you know, we point that finger at, at, um, at Spurs a lot. PSG might be the biggest bottle jobs, in, not in the history of football, maybe in the history of team sports, Jack. I've never seen a team capitulate on so many occasions. Once the pressure gets to them, it, they just drop. And it's not just... Jack, we're not talking about average football players here. We're talking about some of the best players in the world. Yeah, I think what I'll say, mate, is that that's where the conversation has to start, in my opinion. Because do I think they're the biggest bottle jobs in sports history or even football history? No, I don't. But from what they should be doing, yes, you're absolutely right. They are the biggest bottle jobs ever. For the quality they have, the opportunities that they have to succeed in this competition, they've bottled it so many times, it's, it's kind of impossible at this point. They signed Lionel Messi, James. They signed Lionel Messi and they couldn't get it done. They got, they got beaten. And, you know, we, we'll get into Benzema, like you said, but... Was Benzema anything? I mean, to me, it, it, it's one of the most iconic solo performances that will be talked about for decades. Because, I mean, how many minutes was was, was the hat-trick from like 61 to 78? 15, yeah, it was like 15 like minutes. Like 15-minute hat-trick. That's wild. That is absolutely wild from, from Benzema. But, like you say, the take-home message here, PSG. PSG let the side down. This wasn't Real Madrid being brilliant. Like, you look at it from basically any perspective. This is, this is PSG Jack, bottling it. Jack, listen... The first leg, the game should have been out of sight. Messi misses penalty. They have chances. Mbappe has chances. It is what it is. They go into the second leg. They um they take the lead in the first half. Had chances to kind of put the game to bed. Second half, they're cruising. They're keeping the ball. Everything's good. Jack, they shoot themselves in like in the foot. Donnarumma is one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Right. Yeah. He's a man of high consistency. And even when he comes into this PSG team he even finds a way to be a ball job. Marco Verratti, I think he's one of the best midfielders in the world. Right. When the going gets tough, he becomes a ball job and he in like he starts complaining, kicking people, fouling people. Kempembe, I like him as a defender, but when the going gets tough, goodness gracious me, he's one of the worst I've seen. He's so right. petulant. Like the to me, it just now it, it just comes down to the DNA of that football club. I Jack, I dislike everything about this football club right now. The Jim, fact that they Jim. have Jordan as, as like as like as their sponsor, they you know it's all this glitz and glamour. We it's want official, um, James. You know exactly. We want Kylie Jenner's. We want um Kim Kardashian. We want all these people at our games. All the famous people. No, get out of there. You are not a part of Europe's elite. I don't care, Jack. They're not no, a part James. of Europe's elite at all. But dude, this is the this is the reason why yeah they weren't my pick for this this thing. They weren't. This is the reason why yeah I have my criticisms of Lionel Messi. I don't. If we're splitting hairs, yeah, I don't think Messi is the goat. He doesn't display the characteristics about when the you know when the tough matches start. What do we see from his body language? What do we see from him trying to re-energize a team and get a team going again? We didn't. Again, we did not see that from him in a different environment. Like. All the people who had that, no disrespect, Jay, I'm not having a go at you here in particular. I know they were your pick. But to anybody who picked PSG to win this whole thing, it's an incredible oversight in just looking at, at, you know, at the people, at the players and just going, oh, they're just so good, they'll just win. No, it doesn't work that way. Like you said, James, this is ingrained in the football club. And, and the difference between Pep um, and Man City and PSG and... Um, Mauricio Pochettino is going to be that when it comes down to it. You know, at this point, I think we, we would say probably now that if we were, were fresh picking, we're probably picking Man City as favourites, right? Because there's a bit of substance there. But, but Jack, okay, you have Man City and PSG. Both teams brought out the all, you know, 
all that sort of stuff there. But Man City have earned their stripes to be there. Yes. You know, they have built, they have been through that her. While PSG, I, I've, I feel at times it feels like they're divine right. Oh, we're not going to really build a team. No, let's just sign Zlatan. Let's sign David Beckham. Let's sign Messi. Let's sign Cavani. Neymar. Right. Jack, it's, to me, it's absolutely ridiculous. And like, you put it down to oh, Messi and it's true. Messi didn't call himself in glory. And like, he, no. he I, I, I do understand where you're coming from. But like, you look at Messi, he isn't one that hasn't seen his, his like his team collapse before prior to PSG. Barcelona, this is what Barcelona's done. But the DNA of this football club, Jack, is an absolute joke. In football, no matter what level, every great team has to suffer at some point, go through yeah. a little bit of ad like adversity. Barcelona's yeah. great team. They had that, bro. They had that against us, Arsenal, when it went two one down. Yeah, even like 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 even in the second leg, we got um um we got the equalizer. They still found a way. This PSG team, once they see a little bit of ad like adversity, the crowd changes, everything like that. They don't get a few decisions. They crumble. They uh, James, fair weather fan, fair weather fan base. For sure. Oh, they Michael were... Jordan, Michael Jordan, Lionel Messi, Messi. Neymar, Mbappe. Oh, St. Etienne are coming to town. Like, oh, we just beat them 5 0. Great. No, well, what no, about no. when the tough gets, you know, I just But but Jack, you say that, in my opinion, PSG have ruined Ligue 1. A great league like Ligue 1. Yeah, with, with, with so many amazing winners, right? I I I was a big fan of, of like Leon back in the day. Bordeaux when they had their run. Marseille right. when it like Lille has been great. It, when it used times. to be Lille at a time when he had Eden, like like Eden Hazard. Monaco. What they've done to this league, a fantastic league that that literally produces some of the best players in the world. They've made it like a fifth or sixth league in the like in the world. It's sixth. You know, but James as well as well. What you have to think about as well. All right, and I hate to bring it to the dry, boring stuff. Everybody's probably thinking, oh, here goes Jack again. If you're an owner of a football club in France and you're not an owner of PSG, what's the goal? You're not trying to win a league. You can't win a league. You can't win a league. So why try? Seriously, why try? You're winning a league for every other team in the, in that league. And I know we've seen Lille and, and whatever and do stuff recently. But for each of these teams, they're going to think, we can't compete with that. So we're just going to shoot for second. That's all we're going to do. And it ruins the competitive balance of the game. That's what. That's why there's no point to it, James. You know, again, there is a difference with Juventus at Serie A. There is a difference with Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga, right? There is a, I mean, Premier League, don't even get me started. La Liga, don't even get me started, right? There's a proper competitive nature between a, a few teams there. PSG is just a bit of a joke. And I know that it, people it, will tell me, well, the league wouldn't say that recently, but I'm just saying to you right now, like... We see how little they care about it. They can Jack, win this Jack, league Jack, with their eyes closed if they want. To me, it's horrible because you're going to see them win the league at the end of the season and like you, you, you're you going to see the lack of celebrations. You know how hard it is to win a league. They just take it for granted, you know? Yeah. And like, I, to me, I take it back to the culture right now. Mauricio Pochettino, I don't believe he's... Like, out of his depth, James. I don't out believe he's depth. good enough. But, but Jack, Mauricio Pochettino is not a bad manager. No, yeah. not at all. Not he by is not a stretch. bad manager and he's been made to look like a bad manager because it's hard to coach these players. Unai Emery is a good manager. He's not He's not a world-class. He's a good manager. He was made right. to look bad by joining PSG. Thomas Tuchel is a great manager. He's one of the best managers in the world. He was made to look I'm, bad. I'm going to backtrack a bit uh, on that. But, yeah. uh, but, but to me, he's one of the top coaches <laughs> yeah, in the sure. world. He was made to look bad at this PSG team. They are, Jack, they are uncoachable. Yeah. The, the 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 only the only people I can see who are going to be capable of doing it is the players who who have mutual respect for these kinds of for the, for these kinds of players. Sorry, the players have mutual respect for. So James, one name, we know the name. It's Zinedine Zidane. It's exactly. going to be the only name that can go it. No, but James, seriously, maybe they won't get the result, but I think the players will respect the man enough and go, oh my God, that's Zinedine Zidane. Like, I don't care who you are. You are starstruck when Zinedine Zidane walks into a into a dressing room, into a changing room, right? So for me, that's the only thing. Because right now, like you said, you mentioned some great managers there. Thomas Tuchel, Unai Emery, Maurizio Pochettino, right? Whoever the hell they bring in next. These players aren't starstruck. starstruck. They earn triple what these managers earn, quadruple, maybe even more. Than, than what these managers do. They don't care about them. They have way more power than any manager does at PSG. Zidane, for me, is the only answer that, that demands a little bit of respect out of these players. Because, James, if not, it's a player-led team. It's a dressing room led by the players. 
Jack, few things today, and 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 we're gonna and I'm gonna touch on it first. First of all, I'm disappointed for Kylian Mbappe because he had another crowning moment to show everyone why he's the greatest player, why he's the best player in the world. Jack, right? Uh, to me, there's no debate right now who is the best player in the world. It's from it's Kylian Mbappe, and he should have the crowning moment at the end of the game with all eyes on him because how great his performance was. He didn't deserve to be on the losing team today. And right. practically, I feel bad for him. And to be fair, he will be a Real Madrid player um, um, by the start of, of like next season. And I'm and Jack, I'm happy for him because overall, Jack, he deserves it because he's not going to prosper in his PSG team. James, if, if, it, if there was even a hint of staying at PSG, of them giving an improved contract offer and him thinking, ah, I do like it here. I'm in France, I'm in Paris. I get to do all this cool stuff in the capital. It's my home nation, all this kind of stuff. If there was even an, a little bit of doubt about him going to Real Madrid, that's gone. He's gone now. He's totally gone. I, I think he was gone before. But even if there was a little bit of doubt, I think that would totally compound it. Because do you um, think he wants to get to knockout stages and come out against any like Jack, reasonable opposition and then Jack, get knocked to, out again? Jack, to me, he, prob not. he probably turns around and looks at the mentality of like half his teammates think like, what in the hell? Like seriously, guys, how could we on always capitulate like this? Jack, is he Jack? He's been a shining light. This should have been yeah. another one where like we're in awe. We're like what Jack, what he did on that football pitch today was world class. He was yeah. Jack. He was by miles the best player on like on that pitch. A pitch that had Luka Modric, Benzema on it. All these guys, M Messi, Neymar. He was the shining light. At least, no, at least Carver Howe won't be able to play him at club level anymore. Like the only time he's coming up against him is for Spain now, so he's lucky. <laughs> you know exactly. But also, we need to touch on Real Madrid. Fair play to them. They were given an opportunity. They were they, the, the door was slightly open, and they kicked it open, Jack. You know, James. Like I said, I, I, you know, we spoke about this briefly before we started recording here. Yeah, no, I don't think this was Karen Benzema's greatest performance ever, but it's one of the most iconic Champions League performances we've ever seen. People are going to be talking about this for decades. It's incredible. You, you mentioned this in a text. I hope you don't think I'm kind of like calling you out here a little bit. This might be Real Madrid's greatest ever number nine. Yeah, I know Alfredo Di Di Stefano played. I know that Raúl played. I get it. But listen, what Benzema's been able to do, and yeah, he was the kind of final product here for for for, for beating PSG out. And, and credit credit where credit's due for Benzema. I think that's a really special moment for him and for this Real Madrid team. And James, dangerous team going out into the knockouts I, now. Listen, I, I, I'm not sure about them being that much of a dangerous team. I just think that th this is just all about PSG. But yeah. I have to give I, I have to just give my due to Real Madrid that they still found a way in set, in, a, in a few names I'm going to mention. Um, here, if I'm being tr truthfully honest, Vinicius Junior, fantastic. You know, Superstar. especially like 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 especially after the um the uh the 60 minute, he showed his quality. Jack yes. Luka Modric is turning 37. Oh my days, I uh, Jack. You know when you see a 37 year old, they're not as mobile as what they used to be. Jack, this right. guy's picking Ronaldo, the ball. Right. You know, <laughs> he's picking the ball deep in his own half. He's having four or five players chase after him. He's yeah, 30, like he's, he's a midfielder. You yeah, talk about aging, like whatever he takes, give it to me. I mm. want to age like that. Like fair yeah, play. He's to not. Him. He's he, he's not doing the Perlo thing where you kind of sit deep and just be the quarterback. Like you say, he's doing the hard running still. I think as well, James. Like you look at the way the kind of game played out as well. Was there that much urgency for PSG to get back into the game? Really? Were there loads of shots? Was it like, oh my god, like they're gonna do it? They're gonna make it back to be a draw, and we'll go to penalties. Like I never got but, that sense. But Jack, as soon as it went three two, the petulance came out of PSG. Yellow cards, Kempembe kicking, just just doing stupid stuff, and like he probably should could have been sent off. And the, the, the players just couldn't they they couldn't hold on to the ball. And, and I'm looking at the front three of Messi, Neymar, and uh, like oh, Mbappe. Gosh. They're just walk. It's it's and I'm like, goodness, this is this this is not a team. This is just a team put together to sell shirts and do all that sort of nonsense. You know, James, definitely, definitely. And and again, like you say, you, you're a coach. What are the like number one, two, and three things that you do when when you're down and you want to try and stay in a game? You don't give away silly fouls. You keep hold of the ball and you just keep the pressure up and you try and move no, move, Jack, move further up the field. So, Jack, suffering is a part of of like the game. You got it. Like, you got to be able to suffer. You know, when things are going bad, you got to show cool heads. And they didn't have that. Jack, from tip off, yeah, I know. It like tip it's off. two two. Like yeah. Jack, it's two two from tip yeah, yeah. off. You keep the ball. Keep the crowd down, and then you go from there. 
Yep. They give the ball away straight away. Real Madrid score. Yep. Like, Jack, this is not an under, I... like, this isn't an under 10s game. It and isn't. We, yeah, no, we agree on this. And again, we, you know, we can point back to this, this fact as well from a footballing point of view. Yeah, I know it's not sexy. It's not cool or anything like this. Neymar, Mbappe and Messi are not the types of players that you want to be utilising in a defensive or really even in a transitional way in terms of football. It looks great on a team sheet. It looks great on the back of a shirt when you're selling them. It looks great when you're promoting your football club globally in Africa, in Asia, in, in the US, fine. But when it actually boils down to it, that's not the way football teams work. That really doesn't. You can usually get away with each team, even the best teams can get away with one, maybe two people without busting their butt in terms of transition or defensively. But three doesn't work that way. Because it James, did. you know what PSG are going to be crying out for next? They're going to be crying out for a, a Paul Pogba type midfielder, a luxury midfielder who might not put the work in as well. Who, who wants to not have the defensive. Because seriously, he's a free agent and that's going to be the next one. It's going to be Variety in there with Pogba. Uh, uh, oh, listen, listen, Paul Pogba signs this oh. But listen, I, I'm just and, saying, and James, Jack, I like Jack. I like all these players. These are some of my no, favorite James, players. James, like, so do I. Saying. I don't want. Again, I, it, I don't want to come here and criticize them. You know? James, I think I think it's I think it's justifiable criticism. It, it, it I mean, is. If, if it P, is. James, if P, if PSG want to hold the biggest title in Europe for most social media followers per player, then great. Good for you guys. You got the most Instagram followers. Good for you guys. Great. You look great in that Jordan shirt. Fine. But I'm looking at I'm looking at other teams. Just putting this out there, a little pat on the back for myself here. Yeah, I picked Real Madrid to go through. I picked Bayern to win the whole thing. These I was the, the idiot. I listen. I was the idiot that went against Jack. I was. I, I was the idiot that picked PSG. But these, but these are the team. But James, these are the teams. The Bayern Munich. We saw what they did when the chips are down. When it's one-one against Salzburg, bit of a shock result. Blew them out of the water. It's Bayern Munich who are going to be later in the games here. It's Liverpool. It's you know these kind of ruthless, proper, proper football teams, not this kind of glitz and glamour individual stuff. I know I've been talking for a while here, but but yeah, like and, and James, if you go back and watch, go back and watch our predictions. I wasn't super sure. Do you know why I wasn't super sure, James? It's Neymar, Messi, and Mbappe. Who are we betting against here? We're betting against the most talented players in the world. In your book the GOAT and the best player in the world right now. And Neymar is one of the most incredible players of our generation. So, yeah, like, don't get me wrong. It's not a surprise to me. But anybody strongly, strongly thinking that these guys have the legs to do it, I just... I... Jack, Jack, listen, I was listen, I was stupid enough to unpick them. But to me, the the ending of this whole thing should just be that picture of Karrion Benzema with his arms up in the air and, like, in the, like, in the back was David Alaba holding up the white chair just that was incredible but again PSG fans football fans let me know are PSG the biggest bottle jobs of all time comment Sammy, down below guys we know you're watching this Sammy we let see us you. Sammy let us know he's actually hitting me up <laughs> right off. now he's actually hitting me up on WhatsApp right now so <laughs> thank you for watching guys this is Box to Box Football and we will see you next time <laughs>